Good evening. How is everybody tonight? Hey guys. That that voice you're hearing in the background, that that's Morgan. I don't have his picture up here yet, but he's here. Well, he's sort of here. He's electronically here. Ethan. He's here in video. So we do have a couple questions for tonight. And let me uh, let me put one of these up on the screen here. This is uh, this was sent to me inquiring, do you have a list of settings for my YouTube channel that I need to set up? And I bought the domain name for my channel, but I have no idea how to set it up. Please help. Okay, somewhere along the line, it has been propagated that and, and I'm not saying this is 100% wrong in in thought process, but okay, you have a YouTube channel which can be named anything you want it to be that YouTube allows you to name it, unfortunately, because there can be a lot of channels with exactly the same name, which is not a good thing. But people have said, geez, you have to go buy a domain to protect your name. Well, the fact of the matter is, if you are the first out there with that name, it's, it's your name. It's, it's actually an implied copyright. Now, that's not to say that people with a lot of money can't go in and fight that and try to take it from you. So you, you wouldn't want to go in as General Electric. You wouldn't want to go in as... Yeah, you wouldn't want to go in as Westinghouse or, or General Motors or Chrysler Corporation or... Uh, Microsoft, Microsoft probably wouldn't work. Apple wouldn't work. So anyway, you don't have to go out and buy a domain name. The domain and a website is totally 100% different from YouTube. Once you have a channel going, if you want to turn this into some sort of a business, then you can... propagate that business with a website and use you know if you can if it's available you can buy a domain with the same name as your YouTube channel there's all kinds of domains out there it used to be there was just just a few back in the early days there was the dot coms and those are still the most popular and the most widely known anything with a dot com but there's also .govs, there's uh, .edus, there's .rr, there's .this, .that, .everything under the sun. There's also .orgs. Uh, some very popular websites have utilized the organizational name. And well, I suppose the, the best, the most widely known one would be uh, Craigslist. So it's craigslist.org. So anyway, I just wanted to point out, you do not have to start out with the domain. You don't have to go spend any money. You have, there's... Bam, Bam asked questions. Okay. Same questions she's asked the last two weeks. <laughs> who, who owns the domains? I can answer this one. Okay, go, go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead. So, so there is an organization called ICON or ICAN. I don't, I don't know. You pronounce it one way or the other. It's an acronym that is like I C A H N or something along those lines. And I C A N N. Yeah, and, and they are the organization that is responsible for all domains at a top level. So when I say top level, that's the dot com, dot edu, dot org, dot farm, dot co, whatever. They're responsible for all of that. And in terms of organizing information on the internet with domains, that's what they do. Um, what they then do is offer the ability to license and create domains to several different providers out there. And that's where companies like, you know, um, HostGator or GoDaddy or 
Google does it, like anybody, they're working through Icon and they've been essentially approved by them. And so when you say who who owns domains and who sells domains, Bandanagramma, it, it's really, it's coming through a company who's working through Icon. Yeah, there's, there's different uh, registrars and it's uh, I-C-A-N-N and there is a there is a who is icon i can who is um and let me bring this over to the screen where you can look up as to who owns a domain name for example uh, goldshaw farm it's a good domain name oh okay i'll just do yours is it for sale? I know someone that may want to buy it. <laughs> oh, well, you know, if 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 you if you're offering the right price, it just might be. I, I hear you. <laughs> I think you got to add a .com to it. Well, I, I didn't know if I didn't add that if it would show what was taken and what's still available or not, but. Okay. And you have you have your information hidden. I do. So I actually I think, you know, you can pay a fee. It's uh, it's not like I don't know, maybe it's like 10 bucks a year to hide your domain information because what you're required to do if you do register a domain is provide all of the contact information that you guys see on the screen right now. And so, like, you know, I don't want to give out my phone number. And so through my domain registrar, I uh, was able to, to mask it. And so that's why it looks like this. Yeah, I've... Um... Either that or somebody in Arizona bought my domain. I wasn't paying any attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I might need to check into that. <laughs> yeah, I just, I went ahead and opened mine up. But I don't know that it's that way yet because they wanted twenty four ninety five for a year to make it private. And I said I don't care. Yeah, talk talk it down. I think you can get get it for half that. Yeah, he was on the phone with them the other night, and they wanted to nickel and dime him. Okay, so at this point in time, it's. Mine is totally hidden. And maybe that's why it's twenty four ninety five. Ah, oh, see, yeah. But um I've I've had some domains over the years. Um ICANN is the uh loosely held organization, I guess, that um There was, there was some sort of change that was just made here recently, and I haven't stayed on top of that. But they used to be the only worldwide authority, and it seems to me that there's that they are now working in conjunction with some other countries. Do you know anything about that, Morgan? Um, I not no. I've, I've got to admit ignorance on that one. <laughs> so, anyway, the I can who is. This, any domain name that you want to put in here, it will tell you if it's if it's available or not. Of course, any seller has the same thing where you can, okay, is this domain available? So if we put in uh, GoDaddy, I think we did this last week with uh, Big Bear Homestead. It's taken. But but if you notice, and I'm on the GoDaddy site. I put in BigBearHomestead.com. And the first thing that they tell you here, that it's taken. But, hey, Domain Broker Service can help you get it. Whoa. 
Well, Daryl, I, I think you're forgetting what specifically uh, I purchased last week with Big Bear Homestead. If you actually look to my screen, you'll see it. Oh well, let me uh, let me put that up here. It's uh, my new uh, educational venture, um, BigBear.edu. So if you guys are interested, check it out. It's a great site. <laughs> this is our new logo. I, I don't know if Jason's in the chat here tonight, but no, he needs to be. So. Anyway. <laughs> so, so Big Wave uh, FLA offer, asked the question of who owns ICANN, and I believe that they are a nonprofit entity uh, that was organized in the earliest days of the Internet. And so they're not owned by anybody. They're their own separate uh, – I, I believe they're a nonprofit, actually, uh, that just sort of stands by themselves. Poor Jason. <laughs> so him. anyway, come on, line, Jason. <laughs> you need to come here and stick up for yourself. <laughs> anyway, the other question that was asked is, how do you download YouTube videos from YouTube? And that person just happens to be in the chat. They they're in the chat. They're in the chat. Okay. I use a program called 4k video downloader let me just bring it over here to the screen and oh they have an update well remind me later the way this works is and let me uh, go into the YouTube channel and I'm just gonna grab a roots and refuge uh, I don't even have to let it play because up here, to, up here at the top is the URL. All you have to do is copy that URL and paste it in the plus sign here. The 4K downloader, which is free, there is a paid version if you want to do that. This gives me the choice of different, res different quality downloads, everything from a 240p to a 1080p. Obviously, it can never be better than what they uh, they originally uploaded it. But the high definition, 1080p, this is a, I'm not sure the length of the video. I, did, I stopped it here on the advertisement. But it's only 446.3 megs. So the point I'm trying to make here is if you want to, and I'm not saying, I'm it's, it's always a good idea to save your videos. So I can download this at a m much, how do I want to say it, more highly compressed than what I can create it on my machine. Bev wants to know what the site is called. 4K Video Downloader is the name of the program. If you just put in a... Uh, if you do that in a search, 4K video downloader, you'll come across this. And this is the way it works. Can you put that link on the channel? Well, I will. Uh, I'll just do it this way. St. Bernard Acres is asking why would want one want to download a video? Well, I, I could actually maybe answer that um, and actually show an example of it, but I will admit you guys might be playing with fire if you do this. <laughs> um, I, I will often take clips from movies or other things and insert just very, very tiny portions of those clips into some of my videos. Um, so, for example, like the video that I put out uh, yesterday – about uh, the the mink attacking our duck house. I actually used a couple of different clips. I think one from Fight Club and uh, another one from uh, um, The Usual Suspects. And so I used a, a different program than what Daryl's showing you here to actually download the clips to drop them into my, my edit. But like I say, full disclosure, you are playing with fire if you do that. Um, YouTube generally allows fair use of a clip up to about four seconds or so. Um, and so that's what's there, but it doesn't stop somebody from putting a copyright claim on you. So 
I do know I'm playing with fire with that one, but I think that it, it really enhances my video, so I, I take that risk. Well, and from from another standpoint, our Monday Night Lives, every time we have a guest, it's, I get little bits and pieces of some of their videos put it together for a promo. I don't do the whole video, but I do little bits and pieces. I usually alter them a little bit. I use what I call creative editing to uh, to put together a little promo to feature that particular channel. So just for example, last night when we had Morgan on, I had that promo for him, which consisted of pieces of at least four of his videos. And in doing it in that fashion, that's, that's fair use. And obviously I'm doing this with knowledge of the person that's on because I'm doing it for them. Well, I, actually, Daryl, I forgot to tell you, I did file a copyright claim earlier today. Uh, don't take it personally. <laughs> oh no, I, I certainly won't. You, YouTube I'm must kidding. have thrown it. You, YouTube must have thrown it away already because they waste <laughs> no time in hitting me with copyrights. <laughs> so, if you've got your program, I'm going to throw your your screen up on the. Uh, yeah. Transmit if you want to put it up here in, in front of the. Uh, Premier yep. Pro. Go, go for it here. So um, the, the program that I use is called Clip Grab. It is a nice, simple interface. It works on both the PC and the Mac. Um, I have a Mac, so, so I need something that works there. And, you know, basically all you do is you, you go into a, a video, you copy the, the URL. Um, I have this fine video from my, my friend Ethan here. And then once you have it copied, you can actually see the URL listed right here. Um, you know, you can change the resolution that you download it at. You're allowed to download it at any resolution that it's available on YouTube. So, for example, Ethan uploaded his video at 1080p so I could get it downloaded at 1080p, but I could also res down if I wanted to. Or... Um, you're going to find maybe some older clips that are at a lower resolution. And so that'll be the maximum that you can download it at. But anyway, you just make sure you have it here. You click grab this clip, you save it to a location and it starts to download. And, you know, given that this is like, I think it's like about a 17 minute video and it's at 1080p, it'll probably take a minute or two, but, uh, it works pretty simply, pretty effectively. And, uh, I use it all the time. It's free. They, you know, always request a donation, which I guess karmically speaking is something you should probably do. But uh, I'm a big fan of this one. It's a uh, clip grab. You can find it at uh, clipgrab.org if you want it. Um, I don't know if Sherry, you want to toss that in URL into the, the chat, but uh, I, I give this program a big thumbs up personally. Okay. So there's, there's two choices of free download programs to get your videos. Um, to obtain videos off of YouTube that aren't yours. Yeah, but don't pay money for it. It's uh, you know there, no. you if you Google stuff and you might end up finding a whole bunch of different programs out there that are trying to charge you like thirty or fifty bucks for it. You know, generally speaking, don't do that. Go with one of these. You're, you're just going to be so much better off. Do you know? Do you know? Does ClipGrab also get videos off of Facebook? Um. I have never tried that, actually. Oh, that's a pain in the tush to, to get videos off of Facebook. Hold on. Let's, I mean, well, the, I, the, actually, you know what? Probably it doesn't because I can't, I don't think you can get a direct. Okay. The, well, the, 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 let, me, let me try this out. Let's let's see if this can work here. The, the 4K video downloader has uh, support for Facebook, Vimeo, and other video sites. I wish I knew that. Oh, wow. Well, you might, you might have me beat then. I, it's not a question of being beat. It's just there's all <laughs> there's all kinds of tools out there. Yeah, okay. no, it doesn't look like you can download well, Facebook. Well, now, now Geeky Guards just said I'm on the site and uh, Clip Grab does mention Facebook. But does it mention it positively or say forget Facebook? I don't know. Clip Grab is a free downloader and converter for YouTube. Vimeo, Facebook, and many other online video sites. Okay, and God's Third Acre is saying, does ClipGuard actually find the clip you want? Well, you have to find the clip that you want. You have to... You have well, it, it actually has a search bar. And so if I were to say, look for Goldshaw Farm, let's see what comes up here. 
um, yeah, a whole bunch of my videos came up right right in the the search bar. Well, star would mean what is Morgan's advantage? Not what you mean. Well, Morgan is is using a, a Mac, so he has no advantage. <laughs> I, I have I have all advantage. <laughs> But then you could be super cool like Ethan and, and use uh, actual code to pull this directly. But uh, I'm, I'm, that's far beyond my abilities. Well, the, the whole point is there's, there's lots of ways to get to videos. Um, and it doesn't cost you anything. You don't, go, you don't have to go out and spend money. Having said that, always, if you're looking for a program to do something along this fashion, be cautious in where you are obtaining it from because there is a lot of bad stuff out there and, and even if um even if you are are downloading a program like this and you're not getting it say from like clipgrab.org there are places that will put out banner or search ads for clipgrab and you know you might be downloading that plus a whole bunch of other crap and yeah you, you should always be very careful All right, so what else are we doing today? This is fun. I, I, I'm so excited to be here on Tech Tuesday. I got to admit, I, this is this is probably my favorite two. Well, I don't know, either this or Spinny Wheel are my two favorite two family homestead uh, programs. Yeah, Ethan just said, "Did I hear a Windows guy tease an Apple guy?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, not here, Ethan. <laughs> here, I'll uh, I'll join you on the screen here. All righty. So anyway. Before I, I just turn Morgan loose here because he's he has a demonstration to give everybody. He's going to show us how he uses Premiere Pro. Last week you saw Jason use it. Um, and Premiere Pro is one of the top editing programs. The downside to it is its cost, in my opinion. And that's the only downside. Um I don't know if, if you would if you would share more what does it cost you to to have the the privilege to use that program well so I actually have it through my job so as of right now it doesn't cost me anything but if I didn't I think I I forget what they actually are charging right now but it is it's fairly exorbitant um, and and I actually have the full uh, Adobe suite of tools because I use Photoshop for image editing, I use After Effects for animation. Um, I use Illustrator for some of the graphic stuff I, I do and build out. So, uh, you know, the whole suite of, of software that Adobe has is really great, um, but it, it is not cheap. Um, and, and yeah, like I said, I'm, I just I get it through work right now, so it's a subscription. So I, I just take full advantage of it. Yeah, and and it's if you have the full suite, I think it's upwards. 30 plus dollars a month ongoing that, that sounds about right yeah and if you have just the uh, premiere pro i think that's at about 20 bucks a month now having said that for a lot of you folks out there there is a slight little thing you can take advantage of if you have kids and you are homeschooling if you are homeschooling your children you have the ability to get the Adobe products as a, with the educational license. And it is considerably cheaper. So I don't know if you were aware of that, Morgan, or not. but I, I, I am, and, and I, I might even have to have a couple mythological children uh, if, if I ever need to buy it on my own. Um, I'll, maybe I'll name the barn cats as, as you know, we're homeschooling them. Uh, but, yeah, no, the, 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 that is definitely the educational route is, is the way to go if you're really serious about trying to get uh, Premiere and Photoshop. And uh, I, I saw Samantha was asking, what, what do I use Photoshop for? Um, probably the main thing I use Photoshop for is, and here, let me bring it up. Um, the main thing I use it for is actually building out my thumbnails. Um, so you can actually see, I just opened up Photoshop here. 
Um, here is a thumbnail that I was just working on for, um, this will be, uh, let's see, which day is this? This is going to be Thursday's video. And I oftentimes will spend an exorbitant amount of time editing and building out my thumbnails. This one, for example, is a composite of several different pictures at once. So I started with this picture that you see here that is uh, a shot of a skunk running out of a have a heart trap. But then what I did was I sort of color corrected it and modified it a little bit and changed what it looked like just a tad. And on top of it all, I inserted a picture of me that I cut the background out of and put it in front of the image. So I have on the same picture, picture of me with the skunk in the background. And then I did a little bit of uh, editing where I modified the background a little bit and blurred it out so that, you know, I'm more visually apparent and the skunk is more visually apparent, but the rest of it sort of fades out a little bit. And then... I have this sort of trademark I always do with uh, my thumbnails where I will put a border around this orange border just as this little simple subliminal way for people to know that, hey, that's one of one of my thumbnails. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I do. So I'll use Photoshop to build all of this out, starting with either photographs or stills like this one and then add all the layers and do all the editing and processing in Photoshop itself. And this is just for the thumbnail? Just for one single video thumbnail. But I, I will say, I mean, it's, it's. I think working on your titles and thumbnails is, is one of the best things you guys can do to try to get more people to watch your videos. And it is, without question. I mean, that, that's one of the things everybody talks about is the, is the thumbnail. That's the first thing people see. Um, you were talking about... Uh, Jason said, because Jason and Robin were talking. Jason and Robin were talking about it working because they're the homesteaders. Mm -hmm. um, North Star Prep Stetter said it's also for anyone in college. Well, education. Well, yeah. so if you wanted it, Sebastian's in college. Yeah, I, yeah, but it's still a subscription. Just and a, it's an ongoing, a, never own. So consequently, I, I I still will stand behind for somebody getting started. You don't. You don't need to empty your pockets to get a channel started. You don't need to go buy a domain name. You don't You don't have to even pay for an editor. There are free ones out there, and there's some darn good free ones out there. The problem with them is the the good ones is there, there's no information, and they are generally very hard on equipment. When I say hard on equipment, I mean they are very memory intensive. They, they're just they're not tuned to the point where... A typical laptop computer can run them. You need some some high end gear under the under the hood. Um, yeah. Da Vinci so, is the one I have in mind. So I see Samantha at Soul Yates is asking um, how how do I get my stills? Um, well, you know I actually get my stills in in two different ways, and it depends on how much sort of pre-planning that I put into what I want my thumbnail to be. If I'm really on my game and really thinking about things for that specific video, I'll actually try to take a picture of what I want the still to actually look like and use a, a like a digital photo that I've, I've taken with my camera. And, and what I found is that is just better quality. Um, it just looks more attractive. Uh, but if I haven't had that forethought or I found that in the course of shooting a video, I got better still images. So, for example, this skunk thumbnail is, I think, a really good one where I actually took a couple of thumbnails of me holding a cage with a cloth over it talking about releasing the skunk. But I felt like this image of actually having me in the cage and the skunk all in one shot was going to be better. And so I decided to pull a couple of stills from the video. Um, here, let me go to Premiere and I can show you that. And so, let's see, let me see if I can find the stills. So, like, here's like a shot of me. Like, you can actually see it. Like, here's a shot of the skunk walking out, right? And so the still that I pulled was probably like one of these images right here. And so that's one still. And so all I did was in Premiere, you can export a frame. So click here, export the frame. And you just save it. And then 
I also had I also found an image probably of like me talking like this. And then I export this frame. And then all I have to do is go into Photoshop and open them up. So here, here's my skunk running out. And here is my picture of me. Now for my picture of me, let me actually try to cut myself out and see how quickly I can do this. I feel this is gonna be a horrible job. Usually I do it much better, but because I don't wanna waste your folks' time, I'm gonna do a real rush job of this. It's just a little rough around the edges here, no problem. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll all come out in the wash. So I just, so what I did there is I just copied this and now I'm pasting it, boom. And uh, let me see if I can get it in roughly the same position. There we go. Kind of looks not like I'm there, right? Um, and and so all I've done is is that. Now, if I want to make myself pop a little bit, I might adjust the color. So like I'll go up to brightness and contrast, up the brightness a tad, up the contrast a tad. That way, you know, I really pop. One thing I have a tendency to do if I want to really try to, if, you know, I didn't care about this skunk back here and I just wanted to make me pop where I'm just standing in the woods, I might blur it in the background a little bit. So add like a Gaussian blur. Okay, you now, can see here. Now, it's, you're, you're, you're going at a very quick rate here. And keep yeah, in mind, sorry, a lot I'm going of, too, probably too fast. Yeah, sorry. a lot of these people don't know, but you're, you're working with layers. Yes. And, folks, what that is, that's the... There's actually a picture overlaid on top of a picture here, is what that is. So he's only working, until he flattens it, he can work on one layer or the other layer and do anything independent on those layers. Yeah, no, that's, that, that is a great point, Daryl. So if you guys look here in this window that I've opened that I'm moving around, um, this is my layers window. And kind of from this window, I can select which layer I'm working on. And so, for example, I've, I've decided to pick this layer here, this layer one, which, you know, if I'm actually doing this right, I might say, I'm going to call this one Morgan, just so that I know which one it is. And if I hide it, which is this little eyeball here, I disappear. Or if I go back, if I selected the move tool, I could move myself around and I could go over here or maybe I'm over here or maybe I'm over here. Um, and, and so that's what the layer lets you do. And oftentimes when I'm working in Photoshop, what I'm trying to do is just build on, on a whole number of layers and let that be how I sort of stack and edit and, and modify the images. Oh, God's Third Acre um, is asking the question of, can you use paint to do layers to make a thumbnail? Yes, you most definitely can. So. You could, for example, um, here, I'm going to pick this. Let me go with a nice bright color. And let's say we wanted to make it look like I have energy rated. Oops. I'm going to make a new layer here so that I don't paint on the one that I just had. So, yeah, so there you go. Looks like I stink like pink or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know, maybe I need a little bit of facial hair here. We'll go T. Picking up those eyebrows a tad. So yeah, you, you can do kind of any of these things that you'd want all within Photoshop. So, you know, back to I think the the point that Daryl was making earlier. You know, programs like this give you just a tremendous amount of capability. It takes a little time to learn how to use them and get the skills. So, so don't just be able to expect to sort of sit down and have it sort of magically happen. No, um, definitely will not. And oh, 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 the program paint. <laughs> okay. Farming, farming um, our backyard. Um, what he's showing you here is the Adobe program. 
Uh, I recommend for folks to use paint.net because it is free. I don't know. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that you can do with the Adobe that you can't do with paint.net. Although Adobe in a lot of cases is a little easier. But uh, paint.net is a free program. It's open source. And that's the one I recommend people at least instead of spending hundreds of dollars, you know, jump into the free ones. If you have the ability, if your your work is paying for this, by all means, you know, jump in something else here. But they all do the same thing. Yeah. Now, I, I think the, the most important thing is, is really focus on thinking about the picture that you have and the design of your thumbnail and creating something that will – if somebody saw it very quickly, it would make them want to click on it and, and actually see what's happening in the video that it's for. Okay, and, and I see that people are still talking in here as well about paint. Uh, paint is not, um, that's Microsoft's very inexpensive tool there's not uh, there is not a lot of things you can do there is a lot of things you can do but it's harder yet paint <laughs> paint.net and this is where you get it it's uh, www.getpaint.net download .html and uh, you can also get it from the Microsoft Store, but if you buy it from the or if you get it from the Microsoft Store, you have to pay a nominal fee for it. The only difference is the one from the Microsoft Store will automatically update every time there's an update, whereas with the one that you get the raw files, it will notify you and say, "Hey, there's an update. Do you want to update?" So, I always say, "No, don't don't go pay money for it. You can get it free." And uh, they have a lot of plugins that are available for this. Um, different plugin packs. The, the advantage of the open source programs is that there are hundreds of developers that, that can be working on it. And uh, if there is a problem, they can get it fixed real quick. There's all kinds of discussion groups and things like that different sources for you to get information. Um, any question you have on how to do it, uh, if you just type into Google. Uh, Daryl, is, is paint.net only for Windows, or is it for that Apple-type oh. computer, too? <laughs> well, let's ask Google. Is paint net I'm surprised it doesn't say on the uh, I bet you it's uh no no what it is not for the Macintosh yeah I was gonna say because it says Microsoft yeah yeah Thirteen moons, you got that, huh? Okay. So anyway, now we'll put Morgan back on over here with his. Uh, it was just, just. <laughs> so so yeah. So that was a quick quick uh, dash of uh, thumbnails. <laughs> so how, uh, how how long would you say it takes you to do a thumbnail? Oh, on average, I probably spend uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a half hour usually. You know, I, I, I will generally speaking in here, let me show you, I can pull up an old file. Um, you know, I will put together like three or four different thumbnails, like all the way through to try to think about, hey, what do I think works the best? Um, let me see one that I actually did a multiples of uh, thumbnails for. Oh, yeah, the Jedi one, I did a bunch of them. So, so here, let me pull open a couple of these. 
So uh, I don't know, about a, a month or two ago, I did a video about how uh, Jedis were like homesteaders. And so for that video, I ended up making a whole bunch of different thumbnails. I probably was having more fun than I should with this. <laughs> um, but, you know, I did things like I, I found like old homesteading photos or paintings and <laughs> added in, uh, I made sort of painted versions of like Luke and Darth Vader and Yoda and added lightsabers into the mix and a Death Star Funny. just as like a way to have some fun with it. Um, you know, this is another one where I've got people working in a field and decided to add all these guys in. Um, <laughs> this one, which is actually pretty close. Or actually, I think this is the one I ended up using where it was, yeah, people work in the field with lightsabers with Yoda looking on. Um, there was this one of just sort of a weird mix of people who look like they're homesteading in front of our barn. Um, you know, another variation of that. And then, uh, yeah, this one that just sort of another variation of a previous one. And so like I went crazy on this one. And so this was, this was probably more towards the 30 or 40 minute range. Um, but then on the other side of things, like the skunk one that I showed you guys earlier, um, this one probably took me, you know, 10, 15 minutes, but I, you know, thought a lot about it and I had, you know, come up with the idea I was as, as I was editing my video of trying to composite me with the skunk so the the whole point i'm trying to make with with you folks here is if it's very easy to dedicate a lot of time into putting together a single video yeah so so i'm, I'm seeing both uh, questions from god's third acre and north star prep Stetter. Uh, regarding potential issues on copyright. And it's true. I, I could get uh, a notice, but my philosophy is that's quick and easy to change. And so, you know, for example, to, to change up the, the, the photo would be a matter of, you know, another kind of 10 minutes. And so I could swap that out very easily and I could just go with a in-video thumbnail for that, you know, short, short amount of time that I have. Um, I, I, I Like I said earlier with the clips, I... Um, usually live a little bit uh, dangerously when it comes to copyright rules, feeling like, at least at this stage of the game for me, the reward is greater than the risk, and so I'll, I'll push the limit. And I you know, try to keep things very much focused on fair use, so like, you know, only using photos that I'm further modifying myself so it could potentially be captured under fair use, or only using exceptionally short clips that add sort of commentary to the video that I'm making as again, another way to work around fair use. Um, and so, so that's my philosophy. That's not for everybody. And I, like I said, I, I think there is amount of, a certain amount of risk to it. So I see the question from my friends over at a table full in the woods asking about how much time do I spend editing, making thumbnails, et cetera, daily. Um, it's, it's not insignificant. Um, I, for a video, I, it can range anywhere between two to six hours to edit each video. Um, and like I said, thumbnails, I'll let's just say 30 minutes or less. Um, and so I'm probably spending about an hour to an hour, two hours a day sort of scattered in there doing editing. Um, you know, I might do like an hour early in the morning, like I get up very, very early, or I might do an hour right before I go to bed. And then there's a lot of times where I might take like a, an afternoon on the weekend to bang through a lot of stuff. Um, and so that's when I kind of put together all my stuff, whether it's the videos or a podcast or, or what have you. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's kind of part of the grind of really trying to be dedicated and consistent with all of this and, and, you know, trying to balance that with work here on the farm as well as my day job uh, and family stuff and friend stuff. Yeah. It's not easy, but I, I have so much fun doing this stuff that I, I am very willing to make the, the dedicated time to it. Okay. And, and let's talk just a little bit more here about, about the copyright issues. If somebody goes out and takes a picture, they have the copyright to that picture. So, so they have that, that image. Um, if you flat out copy somebody's picture, they have, if, if they see it and they haven't given you permission to use it, 
then you could be in trouble, both financially and with YouTube and, and the entire world. If, if they find, number one, they have to find it, they have to say it's theirs, they have to sort of prove that it was theirs. And you, there are other alternatives, like the site that I have here on the screen right now. This is pixabay.com. And they have a large selection of not only photos, but also videos, video clips that are shared, free use. It's royalty free stock. You can use them on monetized videos. You can use them for anything you want. In advertising, it doesn't matter. They've just, there is a thing in here that you can donate, buy them a cup of coffee or something if you want. But there are tons of high-quality images. Not saying it's anything you'd want, but there are lots of images available. Just great pictures. Here's Morgan Stocks, um, flowers, animals, and it's searchable. It is totally searchable. So you could. Um, well, let's go into uh, health and medical. So different categories. Here's uh, here's somebody's fruit stand, I guess. So anyway, these are all free for you to use. Go to a site like this. The problem with that a lot of people do, they get themselves into troubles. They'll say, give me a picture of, I don't know, a... Uh, of a Chevy car, so they'll just type in Chevy and they'll say go to images in Google. Well, a very, very high percentage of these are going to be copyright images. So if you pick on any of them, they'll tell you this right here at the bottom, images may be subject to copyright. Learn more. And this is, this gives you a real brief introduction to copyright infringement policies so I, I just kind of want to make you aware of that if you and I'm not saying not to do it obviously Morgan does a little bit of this I do some of it but I try my best to make sure that I'm always into the free protected areas I don't like the idea of paying uh, $49.95 for a picture to use as a thumbnail on a video one time that 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 video was maybe going to make me a buck and a half just it doesn't make any sense so anyway morgan back to you you still here here oh sorry i was muted as i was typing because i have like the loudest keyboard in the world yes, um, yes you do well that's a <laughs> macintosh for you i guess <laughs> <laughs> Well, da Daniel downloaded Clip Grab like you posted. Now he has two toolbars going. <laughs> yeah. I, I, one last note before, because I, I actually want to go to jump to editing next, but one last note for uh, the copyright folks. Uh, you know, and, and my buddy Ethan is making this point really well. You know, one of the things that will always help you with fair use is if you're significantly modifying the original work. So, for example, um, you know, going back to like some of my Star Wars stuff, right, where I'm significantly modifying, um, let me think, I think it was like this one, like this one, right? So this was three separate pictures, plus I have one picture that's entirely my own here. Um, and I also put an axe in Obi-Wan's hand here. And so I've significantly modified it. Right. That type of stuff actually will help you on the grounds of fair use. So if you just take a picture and reuse it from somebody, that's much, much more likely to get you in trouble from a copyright perspective versus if you use a small sample of that picture as part of another picture that you're creating with lots of other elements. Um, and so, that, so that's, that's the other thing that you can you sometimes do to avoid issues there. So that's just a one last thought on copyright. But yeah, let's let's jump to editing. Um, oh, okay, and before you do that, I see that God's Third Acre has asked. I probably missed it, but what program do you use for editing? I don't know if you're talking to me or to Morgan. Morgan uses Adobe Premiere Pro. I use a 
handful of other programs. I don't have Adobe Premiere Pro. I refuse to pay that kind of money for it. So, so I use uh, I use some free programs. I use uh, Filmora. I use um, uh, Cyberlink Power Director. I use uh, DaVinci and uh, and a couple others. So, I use I use a toolbox. I guess you might say so for some for some videos uh i want things a little that i know i can do quicker in maybe um by using the cyberlink over the filmora filmora is a, a very very good basic editor it is good if you have a single camera single point of reference that you need to edit if you have multiple cameras it is not a good program. It is not for you. Um, at that, if you want to do that, then something more like the CyberLink uh, Power Director would work much better. Power Director has the ability to uh, to take two different sources of videos that were recorded at the same time and overlay them and sync them up by the video by the uh, audio. So it does. It will do that automatically for you. Um, a lot of people used to use a clapboard to uh, to do that. I don't know, Morgan. How do you do it with with multiple humans? So, so um, that's actually one of the beauties of Adobe Premiere. You can actually auto sync a clip. Um, okay. So, for example, let me. I think these two are the same thing. So, in Premiere, if you look at the the portion that I've got right here, these are. Two, this is two different cameras. So one one angle was shot with my Sony. The other angle was shot with uh, my GoPro. And so what you can do, though, is you can select both clips just like this. And then if you right-click on it, um, you can just go to where it says Synchronize. And you can, you know, it gives you lots of different options of, of what you want to synchronize to. You can synchronize to the start of the clip, the end of the clip, or you can sync by audio, which is pretty much how I'm using this exclusively. And I'll just hit OK. It takes a minute or so to work, and then boom. And so now this is perfectly synchronized. And so like I can cut it in a way where the action can, can kind of continue from one camera angle to another. Sure thing. We're just on the back side of the property. These guys. the skunk cage. I try to get him out. See? So it's nice and smooth and perfect. And it you're able to just synchronize right in in, in Adobe Premiere, which was great because uh, when I first started making YouTube videos, the camera that I had didn't have an external microphone jack. And so I would often record my audio just with my phone. Um, because I wanted to have really good uh, audio and I didn't want to have like wind noise or other things. And so I'd use, I put my iPhone in my pocket and record the audio with the audio recorder, but then I'd shoot my video with the camera. And what I could do then is take the audio track and the video track and meld them together in post-production. And because Premiere has that feature, it's, it's really easy. Um, before Premiere had that feature, I used to do the old just clap trick where you know if you clap your hands just like this like three times you can then use the noise from the clap as well as the visual of your hands coming into contact as a point that you can synchronize and you can work from that as well so um you guys want to see how i edit my videos i, I you know I, I one of the things i i kind of have asked the people have asked me about before is that um you know like how do i go from shooting a video to putting it together and adding everything from the the clips to the music and uh the process i, I use I've, I've found has worked really well for me this doesn't necessarily work well for everybody but you know it always starts with uh, my raw footage 
And so, so what I will typically do is, um, here, let me just find an example of it here. So what I typically do is I'll take all of my clips and I will just lay them out here on the timeline. So you just you just sort of drag the clip over here and you lay it out here. And then what I will do is just go through my footage and watch what I've got and you know see what's good, see what's not, see if I can find a good shot. You know, right here for example was a was a good shot that I found. And so what I will typically do is I will Cut the shot out. There's a little razor blade tool that Premiere has. Um, if you just hit the C button on your keyboard, it'll do it. And so I'll make a little cut mark and then I'll select the clip and I will color code it. So, you know, usually I have a color coding system where anything that's a good B roll shot, I'll color in red. Anything that's good dialogue, I'll color in purple. Um, and then, you know, sometimes I'll use other things, but just for demo purposes here, let me make this one brown so you can see how it changes the reason i do this is it helps me find it later on because i'm gonna spend probably an hour and a half just watching all of the footage i shot for this video and going through and taking as much as i can and so you know just to give you an example too like as i'm as i shoot my dialogue and my stand-ups still nothing in those traps right so that was just one clip that i selected right here and then I let so the other stuff just be garbage. Last, but then I want to pick video, it up again here. Um, I got a lot of questions and comments. And uh, did you do? This is where you see I do. I I stutter. I I screw up my Number what one. I want to say Number all the one. time. How are your ducks? And and so typically I'm doing take after take after take, Number doing two. way more takes than I Number should, two. wasting way more time than I should. What the heck did you do? Um. And, and so kind of all of those things you see actually come out in the edit process. But after a while, what I have is all of my clips have been logged and I've gone through every shot and cut every single piece out. And then what I do is I go through the time, time uh, intensive process of just selecting all the stuff that I considered garbage and deleting those and I, I compress it down you can actually do that right in Premiere again. You can just go to sequence, close gap. And when you do that, you basically. Talking with some of my neighbors, they all suggested that I either shoot it or drown it. And and as, as far as suggestions go, I understand. So and there you go. So I've, I've now cut it down. At, once I have that raw assembly going, that's when I start to, and that's actually where I am in the process of this video. I will just start to add in music. I'll start to cut the shots together, add the dialogue together, and I will start to add B-roll in so it sort of feels okay. smooth. So let me show you guys what this sequence looks like here. Still nothing in those traps. After our last video, um, I got a lot of questions and comments and responses. But the two most predominant questions that I received were, number one, how are your ducks doing? And number two, what the heck did you do with that skunk that you trapped in the last video? Let's see. And so it's just then it's a process of, you know, trying to work to the music, find ways that you make the music work. Um, I get my music from Epidemic Sound. It's a it's an online subscription service you can use. And uh, what they do is they give you music that won't get you in trouble from a copyright standpoint or, or make you have to face copyright claims and you lose your ad revenue. OK, it's, and, it's, it's, yep. it's, it's time for just a little. little yeah, go for it. Little Stop me. advertisement. I'm probably going too fast. <laughs> If you uh, if you join TubeBuddy, and there's a link in the description below, so you guys go do that. It's it's free, but they also have paid versions. And if you have a paid version, you can get Epidemic Sound at a discount. Just just thought I'd throw that in. So if anybody wants to get TubeBuddy, there's a link in the description below. Go ahead.
No, that's a great plug. <laughs> um, but but yeah, so so the music's there. One of the thi- one of the tricks that I've found too um, that I strongly suggest for everybody is um, I make a music folder, and so in my on my uh, external hard drive where I save all my video clips, I have a folder that's just music tracks. And in that folder is every music track I've ever downloaded. And like every time I need to use a new external hard drive because I filled it up, I just download, I, I just copy all of my music from the previous folder. That way I can just, you know, drag a track from here into my Premiere Pro project and then I can start working with it right away. One of the things that I feel like I spend way too much time doing is searching for just the right song and just the right music track. But at the same time, there's probably about, I don't know, 10 or 12 different music tracks that I use all the time. Like if you go back and watch our videos, you'll see like some of the same songs coming up multiple times. It's because I'm being lazy and I'm just pulling from this library. And and what's nice is it means that I don't have to go out to the website to search for it. It's just right there at my fingertips and I can just grab it and use it. So that is that is how I find the music. Um, I'm just looking for questions. Are there any questions out there that I missed? Um, I don't think so. It doesn't look like it. So, yeah, that's I mean, other than that, it's just a matter of going through and, and editing. <laughs> Another trick that I've found that helps your retention and helps keep people watching is if you go to B-roll. So I, you'll see that I try to avoid staying with the same shot too long, and I always try to change my shots, and I always try to add B-roll. So, for example, you like you see me talking here, um, really and then you see a, a jump cut where I've actually moved in the frame. So, like, I'm here, but then I'm here. I actually do that intentionally. So... Pretty much every sentence I speak when I'm recording a video, I'll, I'll speak that sentence and then move myself just a little bit. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a trick to, to get the, the frame to move a little bit and get the audience to pay just a little bit more attention. Some people find it uh, aggravating and, and kind of nerve wracking. Other people are kind of used to it. And, and, and I, I find that it actually does, though, help our retention rates. And so I'll do a lot of that. But I haven't had too much luck there. And then the other thing I'll do is I'll often go to B-roll, even if I've used that B-roll clip in a previous video. So, for example, the video that I pulled out, put out Monday, I actually u- already used this clip of the mink walking around outside the duck house. Um, Morgan? But Yep. Yep. Just before – just want to stop you here because, again, because of – some of the people in the room are explain b-roll yes so b-roll so um this goes back to ancient times of editing when you used to have an a track and a b track and actually even if you see the way adobe premiere is set up right now you see these different tracks um see where my cursor is moving so i have v1 i have v2 v3 uh you know typically v1 is considered the a roll the A roll is usually a person talking or it's your narration or it's your basic uh, video footage. But then the B roll is stuff that you might put on top of it. So if I'm talking about the mink, um, you know, if you look here, right, my A roll is actually this shot of me talking in the field, but I'm adding some B roll on top of it to cover it so that you can see something um, more visually interesting or see something relevant to what I'm talking about. And so that term B-roll, you'll, you'll hear it a lot. Um, if you search for it on YouTube, like how to shoot good B-roll, um, it, it's, it's an important part of making videos and making videos that are, you know, really visually appealing for people because it gives somebody something additional to look at beyond just you talking. And, and so, you know, if you're thinking about like how to really up your game with some of your videos, shooting a bunch of B-roll and getting B-roll and using that to cover just a a video of you talking um, is one of the best ways to do that and one of the easiest ways to do it as well. Okay, Morgan, there is a question here. They're asking, I'm assuming they're asking you because I think I've pretty well told everybody. I want to know what kind of camera and mic you use. So um, hang on a sec. Uh, so my main camera these days, and I, I actually just got this not too long ago, it is a Sony A6400. It is a um, DSLR camera. It um, 
is I believe a three quarter frame. Uh, so it's, it's not a full frame camera. So it's got a, a slightly smaller um, visual processor chip inside the camera. But uh, this is this is what I use right here. I, I've actually just got it handy. Um, it's nice because this is like one of the only Sony's out there that has the flip screen. Um, oh, I don't I actually have my battery charging right now, so I can't turn it on. But um, it's got a nice little flip screen. Um, I also use a Rode VideoMic Go that you see up here. And I, I have a dead cat on it. So that's what this uh, little fluff, fluffy sock thingy is. This helps give me a nice, good, clean audio, even while I'm like shooting out in our pastures and we have a nice windy day. Uh, the the dead cat helps suppress that. The mic itself gives you great directional audio, so wherever you're pointing the camera, it's going to pick up that audio. Um, so, so this is my primary camera. The other camera, though, that I use all the time, and I actually have it outside set up right now shooting a time lapse, so I can't show you, but is probably the recommendation I have for anybody out there who's trying to think about, they want to improve their video and audio quality, but they don't want to spend a ton of money. What I use is a GoPro Hero 7 Black, and you can get that camera now, I think it's even down to about 400 bucks or so, um, maybe even 375 and it's it's a great mm -hmm. little camera um gopros you know as you guys know they don't have a flip screen so that's the one downside to it but they have really nice wide angle lenses which allow you to capture most of your what you have in front of your camera so you can just hold your your um gopro kind of just like this and it'll capture everything in front of it and what I really like about the GoPro Hero 7 Black is it has this image stabilization uh, capability with it that makes everything look so smooth. Um, just to give you guys an example of, of when, I, when I say smooth, like what I mean, um, like these shots of me walking around with a duck. So like this shot right here specifically. I didn't do any effects or anything to this. But this is all just stabilized by the GoPro itself. And um, if you usually see how herky jerky, it, it looks probably a little herky jerky through the, the YouTube stream, but it's actually really nice and smooth. And it almost looks like you're shooting it with a gimbal. And it's all just with the camera. And it's all with a camera that's less than 400 bucks. But please and note, please note, that's the Hero 7 Black. The other GoPros do not have that stabilization. Yeah. Yeah, you might see a cheaper GoPro, but you know, I, I would, you know, strongly advocate to chip in. If you're gonna get a GoPro and you get one of the lower, like just the GoPro Hero Seven Basic, you're better off getting the black because it's like I think it's probably like fifty or sixty bucks more. But that stabilization makes a world of difference. And so I use this GoPro. I also will add a, a little tiny external mic that is a little bit smaller than this one. Um, and I, but I attach it to the top with like a, a special case that I got on Amazon for, I think it was about 30 bucks. And I have a little audio adapter that you have to get from GoPro. That's like about 50 bucks. Um, and so the whole kit though, that I use is in total, it's less than $500 to have a setup that gives you good, perf you know, nice quality video, really smooth when you're moving around and walking around with it, especially if you guys are walking around your, your homes or your gardens, trying to get footage, working with animals, trying to get footage and you want to stabilize it. It's great. And the main reason I actually use the GoPro is because our climate up here in the winter can be brutal. You know, we have like months at a clip where I'm out there shooting on a daily basis in like negative 20, negative 30 degree weather. And when I'm doing that, a camera like this, its battery dies so quickly. I only get maybe about 10, 15 minutes of life out of each battery when it's so cold like that. But with the GoPro, I've, I've found that on each battery, I can get at least 30 to 40 minutes on that battery. And so um, I use the GoPro really as my primary cold weather setup. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. And so if you guys are thinking about trying to upgrade if you like you know you're just using your phone now and you feel like hey you're ready to take that next step forward the thing i'd recommend personally is, is the gopro so you can you can click on the amazon link in the description <laughs> never misses a beat he never misses a beat guys <laughs> welcome to my life <laughs> 
So yeah, the, it's it's a it's a fabulous little camera, and I was fortunate enough to get one of those for my birthday this year. So yeah, I've been been playing with that a lot. So, so Jay Love Adventures asked the question of, would a wide angle <laughs> lens make me look skinnier? The answer is depends on how close you're standing to the wide angle lens. So it, it you know the wide angle lens actually will distort you where. Um, if you're really close to it, um, it will not look, will not make it, you look. It thin. will not be flattering at all. <laughs> but you're, if you're standing very far away from it, it actually could be much more flattering. So, so to to be honest, J Love Adventures just stand far, and it it could be uh you know very slimming. So, and and I'm a little curious that you that you picked the Sony. I don't know why, but I will say that there are there seems to be a a pretty large movement now going toward mirrorless cameras rather than the DSLRs. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I actually screwed up. I said that the the A sixty four hundred is a, a DSLR. It's actually it is actually a mirrorless. Is it so, okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm not familiar with the Sony. I I, I have I've searched high and low on the uh, Canon side, and I'm just I'm just not uh, not familiar with the Sony's or the uh, Panasonic's. So so this is for people who are looking to spend a little bit more money because the a6400 i think goes for about 900 bucks these days um you know i i was looking to upgrade my camera to kind of get to that next you know level of quality and i did a lot of research between the the canon cameras the you know panasonics that are out there um and and the sony and, and the reason i ended up going with the sony is a couple of reasons one the quality of the footage is great. It, you know, you hold it side by side against some of the cannons, and I, and I watched like about a billion YouTube clips of people doing this. It, it just looks better than something like the M70, which is kind of the equivalent camera uh, on the Canon side for for mirrorless. Um, and so it, lo it looked a little bit better. And then th this specific model of Sony has this great autofocus feature, and since I'm constantly moving around in front of the camera and changing where I am in the frame and I'm constantly trying to shoot animals and get lots of, of imagery like that, having the quick, fast focus and really reliable focus is, has been great. Um, and, and so, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I've found. I'm trying. I'm sorry, I just saw Carrie's question. I'm trying to. Do you have as much trouble listening, hearing to live shows on your phone when locking up the ducks as I do? <laughs> no, Carrie. I'm probably not having as much fun, uh, trouble because I can't get any live shows when I'm out by the ducks. I um, I am uh, so far from the internet where the ducks are that uh, it's just nice, quiet, peaceful shore time. Um, and I see uh, North Star Prep Center has the question of what is the difference between a DSLR and a mirrorless? And, uh, you know, I don't know, Daryl, do you want to take this one? You probably do a better job than I will. What, what is the difference between the DSLR and the mirrorless? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that question the question? Was, yep. Okay. Yep. The, the DSLR camera is called a single lens, lens reflex camera. And I suppose that the easiest thing is to go back in time a little bit it used to be cameras had two lenses and had a lens that you would that went to the viewfinder and then it had the lens that would actually take the picture put the image on the film in the back of the camera and the problem with that is that they were they were offset they were two separate lenses so one of the one of the major improvements in photography was a single lens um camera the dslr digital single lens reflex camera and what it is there's a little mirror that is behind the lens that points up into the viewfinder so when you're looking through the viewfinder you're actually looking through the lens when it takes the picture that mirror has to snap up out of the way so that the light goes back in and hits the film behind it well, when digital came about, it just replaced the film with a with a little chip, so it's reading the light directly. But the mechanics of the camera didn't change. That that mirror is still there in a in a in that type of a camera, and it has to click up and click back down. 
and they have gone and th- th- what they've done now is they've taken on the same thing and said hey because it's now digital and we have the electronic image we can just port that into a viewfinder so they have have an image if you would from the chip directly without going through the mirror so i've taken the entire mirror mechanism out it's made the camera smaller a little lighter a little cheaper and you still have the single lens camera it's just mirrorless so there's uh in my opinion unless you're a very very high-end professional photographer uh, it, it's nothing but plus plus in in good things that's happened it actually puts the uh, puts the camera lens closer to the uh, to the chip because it doesn't have to, doesn't have the mirror in between it so your um, I forget exactly what it's called but it's the focal point from the lens to the uh, to the chip it's actually closer uh, can get, works better in less light all kinds of advantages so plus a little bit cheaper I think that's probably the, the best thing I can do if you just do a search on that on the internet I'm sure you'll you'll get us more information what you care to know North Star yeah. Prepstetter is the Canon Rebel mirrorless how about the Canon G7 power shot okay the Canon G7 power shot is a is is not a um, that, that that's a point and shoot camera. Uh, the rebels are DSLRs, so they they do have a mirror. Uh, as far as I know, all of the rebels have a mirror. They've all gone to the EOS series, and they've maintained that same series even in the mirrorless end. But most of the mirrorless ones are denoted by the letter M, like an M50 or an M60, M90. Um, And you can tell the difference right away when you look at the two. The mirrorless camera has a smaller body. uh, So if you have big hands, that could be a drawback. But again, just do a a real quick search on that, and um, you'll you'll have more information what, uh, what you care to know about. Hey, Morgan. All right. i trying to think. I think I've kind of covered all the stuff that I had for you guys. Um, <laughs> talked B-roll. We talked editing, clip selection. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm plumb out. You guys got me. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Well, let me just throw in something a little bit extra here that's that's not uh, with any of your clips in particular or mine in particular, but it, it brings up the point of B-roll. B-roll can be can be virtually any clip of anything. Doesn't even have to pertain to the video you're working with. It's it's background image. That's that's filler material to make the finished product more more appealing yeah actually actually Daryl, that's that's a great point um in this video i'm working on right now um i talk about how i google something anything with the skunk that i had in the trap was and all i did was i did a screen capture of me searching for how to get rid of a skunk and I just plop that over there, all in the name of again trying to break up the shots and, and improve the retention on on the video itself. And, and see, I thought you just captured that skunk skunk so you could create your own dead cats for your mics. Yeah, you know that that actually is the side business I'm starting to think about for the farm to be uh, <laughs> do sort of handcrafted fur dead cats for for folks. And uh, I don't know. I think, Given the growth of YouTube, it could be a lucrative market, you know. <laughs> so, is there is there any other questions anybody has? Well, uh, table full in the woods is asking Morgan uh, Morgan outro. Is it necessary or does does it lose view time? So you know what? Let's actually I can show you guys something. Um, I I have come to the conclusion that intros and outros. Uh, really only run the risk of hurting you and you should just focus on making 
as interesting as a possible um, a video that um, can retain your audience. So here, let me get my metrics up here. Um, it's gonna have have to go back a little ways. Um, but I used to have uh, an intro for a lot of my videos. Um, like I think this one has it, where if you go to your analytics and you look at your audience retention, um, one of the things I would notice is you, I would start with a video and I'd, I'd have like a quick intro and then I'd play my video intro right here. There it is, boom. And that was quick. And it just, it would contribute to the drop off. This one actually isn't as dramatic as some of the other ones, but I would notice that my audience retention would just stink. And so what I started to do instead was just get right into it and don't waste anybody's time. You know, let them know what you're doing and, and set up your story and, and be very quick with that piece of it. And then as you're ending, end abruptly. Like if you look at some of the bigger channels, you look at like say Justin Rhodes, right? His video is like practically cut off at this point. And, and the main reason he does it is because I'm, as I'm gonna guess is that it's helping his audience retention and he's out there looking at his metrics. And the more that you hint that your video is ending, the more you're gonna risk, uh, run the risk of having people drop off your video. The more people that drop off your video, the less YouTube's gonna promote your video. And so it only ends up hurting you and your potential growth. And and so I, I would strongly discourage using outros. I actually strongly discourage you even saying, hey, if you like this video, please you know comment down below or click the subscribe button and we'll be back soon with another video. Cause all of that stuff is just extra noise that is giving people a signal to stop watching your video. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I would say, you know, cut it as, as soon as you can. Just cut to the chase for people. Oh, hey, Jen from Sunshine Farm just stopped in. Um, you know, one, one other thing, too, I, I, I encourage everybody to, you know, I know you and Jason were talking a little bit about this the other day, but I encourage everybody to look at your analytics because that is how you're going to figure out ways for your channel to grow. You're going to see what's working, what's not. Um, to give you guys an example of that, um, one of the things I, I noticed recently was, uh, let me go up front page here. You know, I noticed that I had this one video that did really well around um, what I wish I'd known uh, before I started a duck farm. And so this video was simply me just talking about um, like what I had learned after about a year of, of keep taking care of ducks. And what it was, was it gave me an opportunity to go back and use a whole bunch of B-roll from old videos uh, showing kind of different things that I learned while taking care of ducks. The retention of the video actually started out really good for like the first week, week and a half. This thing was up over uh, 70% in terms of audience retention. And so what happened was, and you'll notice it here after this is like at the one week mark, you know, it was doing okay for me, but it wasn't like blowing the doors out, but YouTube started promoting the heck out of it. And it started to grow really quickly. And I think it's, yeah, it's almost up to 50,000 views and I put it out, I think, uh, so April 8th. So about two weeks ago. Um, and, and so for me personally, that's like really good video growth. And so I took that as a cue to start, you know, really doubling down and starting to focus even more and more on, you know, telling videos about ducks. And then actually pretty much, I did this one about uh, not growing hemp, but then from there, I've just been very focused on, on talking about the ducks and keeping people up to date on the ducks. That was, you know, partially driven by, by looking at my analytics. So are there other analytics questions people might have too? Because uh, well, I see. that's- uh, Single dad homesteading yeah. is asking, mm -hmm. what's a good average on retention? I would say anytime you're at 35% plus, Morgan, wouldn't you say that's? Yeah, I mean, so, so the metric that I, I've heard from some people actually is, you know, 
if you want YouTube to start actively promoting your video, you need to have 50% audience retention at the end of the actual video. So um, not the average retention rate, but at the end. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, so this video that I just put out Monday, okay, the, the, the retention metrics just came in. And so you see here how it says 61% or that that's at the very, very end of the video. So you have to bring your cursor all the way to the end to see what it is. Your goal is to be above 50% at this point. And that's going to be one of the things that triggers YouTube to promote the heck out of your video, which is going to then help you grow. What you'll see is though, once YouTube starts promoting it, your, your retention rates are going to drop. And that's just by sheer fact of the more people being driven in there and you just have more le likely less retention. I think my theory that I, I'm personally working on is, and this isn't fact, but just my theory, is that part of the reason why, you know, that one video I just did about the duck farm is really sort of hovering at 50,000 and it hasn't shot up to 100,000 or a million is because I haven't been able to keep my retention up. As they've pushed more people into the video, fewer people stayed till the end. And so YouTube hasn't been promoting it as much because of that. That's just my theory, but I, I, I it sort of makes sense. Um, but yeah, the, the 50% is, is what I've heard has been the goal at the end versus, you know, the average view duration, which is 62.6 .6 here. Um, but really what you should be shooting for that 61 over here. Well, and, and let's just talk a little bit, not only about the audience retention, but that's, a, a, a lot of people are are stuck in the thought process that I can't have my videos. They have to be five minutes, between five and six minutes. That's that's the ideal time. And at least wise from everything that I've heard from the YouTube gurus, that really has nothing to do with it. As long as as long as they're looking for view retention for a longer period of time in a video. So in other words, if you have 100% retention on a one minute video, that's, that's not what they're looking for. If you have a 25 minute video that 20 minutes in, you still have 50%, they would rather have that because you have engaged that viewer for a much longer period of time on YouTube and YouTube is serving them up that content, they're serving them up ads, and YouTube is making money from that. Yeah, and and, and I think, and I just saw actually Jen from the Sunshine Farm made a great point in here. You know, don't be so focused about benchmarking uh, yourself against other channels and other people. The biggest thing you can do to try to grow your channel and grow is to focus on improving what you're doing specifically and 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 sort of try to beat yourself. I'm, I'm right now I'm actually trying to bring up actually, you know, one of my older videos here. Let's see if I can get it to work. Um, yeah, so so here's the analytics for an older video of mine. And, and if you look at like, you know, that retention metric I told you about and like where you want to be. Like, you know, this one's, you know, it's low and, and it took me some time because this is just simply me walking around my barn and talking about it. And I shot it, um, let's see, this was from April 4th, 2018. And so that was a little bit over a year ago and it's got poor retention it's got poor audio quality. It's a whole bunch of stuff. But what it's about is it's focusing on trying to consistently improve, you know, step by step on what you did previously. And and if you can build on that success, that's where you're going to build an audience and that's where you're going to build just better quality videos. And so focus on trying to beat yourself, you know, time after time after time. Um, one of the things I like the best is that YouTube has, if you look at your analytics for a specific video, especially in the early days of that video, it gives you a benchmark of your own video. And, um, you know, right here is actually a bad one because this video is just starting to really take off. Um, but if you look at, um, hold on, let me see if I can find it. So this video here, this is a good one. So if you, you look at my analytics here, you can see how this one performed versus my averages. And I find this chart right here specifically to be very, very helpful. 
this is such a good opportunity to see the range of how your videos perform and whether or not you're doing better than yourself or worse than yourself. And, and I've had, um, you know, videos where I've been tanking like, uh, Ethan from 180 degrees, uh, uh, from average, he and I are always texting each other about our retention rates and our, our launches and seeing how the videos do. And, and there's been many times where I've texted him and I've got videos that have, the blue trend line well below the gray that you see here. And it it's, it's that crummy feeling, but all you can do is, you know, focus on trying to do better than the last time. But uh, I find this to be a helpful chart just for the record. <laughs> so Homestead Paradise just asked, what would I do? What would I change if I could go back and start my channel all over again? Um, I think the only thing I would do is I spent a lot of time thinking and contemplating about doing a YouTube channel and should I, or should I not? And, and I think I wasted a lot of time doing that. I, I think my biggest regret was not starting sooner and not focusing on doing regular content sooner. Um, the, the, the thing that I found the most is you learn so much by doing and each video you make is is sort of another opportunity to learn and another opportunity to get better. And so to keep doing those repetitions and keep doing it over and over again and keep trying to improve yourself, I think that's actually the most important thing. I think then also by the virtue of the fact that you're creating this library of content and putting it out there for folks, um, you know, you, you're, you're actually casting a wider and wider net. And, you know, I've done videos about maple syrup that have drawn lots of people in. I've done videos about ducks that have drawn people in. I've done videos about trees that have drawn people in. And kind of each of these things sort of cast its own net for an audience. And it's been doing that consistently time after time after time. That in and of itself will help build your channel and build your audience. And so my biggest regret is is that I, I didn't start doing that sooner. I didn't try to learn more on the fly. And I, I spent too much time trying to make things just right when I started and uh, didn't just get out there and just start doing. So yeah. I'm a math teacher. I have to love data. <laughs> <laughs> so Anna is asking, uh, when do you get past the point that YouTube lets you make videos longer than 15 minutes? I, I don't know. What is the dividing I line these I days? Think, I, I, think, I think you just have to be... Um... Uh, is it just verified? Don't they yeah, have to like yeah, verify ver your email? Ver yeah, verified is, is the word I was looking for. I was I was thinking approved, but it's verified. When, once you're verified by YouTube, I think think you can do that. Yeah. So so Anna, you might want to just look into seeing if you verified your account, and and that might be the only thing you have to do, and then you can start showing off your uh, uh, garden and soon to have ducks. I'm excited for you, by the way. <laughs> uh, single dad homesteading. Um... I'm, I'm monetizing what are the things that play into it other than view time if any well there's there's all kinds of fuss about about monetizing and and we were involved in in some of that as as we grew we were kind of like right on the front edges they kept you know changing the rules we were like right there or almost right there, so we didn't go through any long stretches of not being able to quote unquote monetize. But even after we were able to monetize, it was a long time before we got a check. Um, there's, I know people that have made a lot of money on YouTube. Um, when, well, Sharon, I know, uh, a fellow that was the one number one YouTuber on YouTube for uh, for a period of time, yeah, in the United States, and uh, and it set him up for life. And then, less than a year after that, after his success, YouTube shut down his channel. So, it, it's a double-edged sword. 
Yeah. And, and, and I'll just say too, it's, it's a slow build. I just, in the name of transparency, I figured I'd throw this chart up for you guys here on the screen. Um, so I didn't get monetized until, uh, actually back in, uh, like mid January. So, um, you know, that mark of a thousand subscribers, I hit that, uh, sometime in, I think it was like in October or November of 2018, but it took me a little while longer to get the, the 4,000 watch hours in, in a year's time. And so I didn't get monetized. I got mon I got approved to be monetized or like the ability to monetize. I think it was like the first week of January, but then it took like another 10 days before they approved me. But once I did, um, you know, it was slow going. I, I've apparently made $869 in over the, the course of that time of being monetized. And really most of that has actually come in the last month when I've, I've really started to, to sort of pick up speed on some things with the, the videos. Uh, you know, I, I'm, it's been $500 this last 28 days, but before that, um, it was, it was, it was slow going. And I was like, you know, my wife would joke. It was like, yep, yeah, oh, there's $2 a day. There's a dollar, three and a half dollars a day. Like, you know, it was sort of just slow going. And so it takes time to build up. And, and, you know, that's why I'd argue, especially in the early days, and I'm personally still doing this, don't focus on trying to spend too much time trying to, to make the money off your channel. Just try to grow your audience and grow your channel and get people watching your videos. The, the money stuff, I mean, from all the successful YouTubers I talked to about it, it's like that doesn't come until you have the big numbers to begin with. So even if you get past some of those initial thresholds, it's still there's going to be another carrot and another carrot beyond that that you're going to have to chase and and so you know you know hitting the milestones is good and it feels really rewarding and uh, at the same time don't expect it to kind of change things at least right out of the gate. So yeah, what else? <laughs> like, I think it's ahead, everybody's tired. <laughs> well, we've we've covered a lot of stuff here tonight. We've covered a lot of stuff here tonight. So, and um, I get Morgan again Thursday night. So. I'm yeah, sure. no, this, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying this. Hopefully you guys aren't getting sick of me yet. Oh, no. Uh -huh. um, I'm having fun on Two Family Homestead uh, week. Oh, Anna Walker is asking, how did my African videos do? Um, you know what? It's kind of interesting. So, so I had a video that got picked <laughs> up by um, an African website. They started, they wrote an article about my video, which was kind of weird. And what happened was, though, I ended up like the views on that thing spiked at the time and I had no idea why. And it required me to go to my analytics to figure it out. So this is the video that I think um, Anna's asking about. It's uh, when you shouldn't trust a good Samaritan. And it was all about this time that I, I went to South Africa and uh, the hood of my rental car broke off. And this guy took the hood and I had to follow him driving around Cape Town. Oh, and Lord. um it was like a fun adventure story. If you guys have the time, I definitely encourage you to go watch it. Um, but what happened here is, and, and you can see it, um, I had this crazy spike right about here. So, you know, I launched the video on February 9th. And then on Monday, February 11th, suddenly I noticed that my views were, which were at about 1,000, which was at the time kind of a normal thing for me after about three or four days. You know, it's actually pretty good. But then, boom, by Tuesday, I was up to 4,500. And by Wednesday, it was up to 59. And then sort of I topped off at 6,300. And then it sort of, it's been kind of flat almost since then, just a little bit of growth. Um, and what you'll also notice, though, is my retention is horrid. Like, you know, the retention at the end of this video is like 16.6%. .6%. And, and what I realized was it was because people would, there was a link in the the article about the video, but they would click on the link and then they'd only watch like a minute and then dip out. And so YouTube never actually promoted this video all that much, even though it got this really great initial boost of traffic from external. And if you actually look at um, 
sort of where my traffic sources are for this video, you can see it here, right? So the traffic sources, I have external, the browse feature was only 14%, suggested was only three, but it was all, it was, I mean, 72% was coming from external. And, oh wait, I clicked on the wrong one. And if you actually look at which external, it was three South African websites. So businessinsider.co.za um, is one, and then it got picked up by a couple of others too. And the article itself, um, it's, it's pretty funny. Now let me show it to you guys. So here it is. <laughs> so they, they, you know, had this American tourist recounts how a South African Samaritan helped them. And they basically went through the, the video that I posted and they wrote a summary of the video. And so this whole article that you, you see here is just basically a summarizing the, the adventure that my wife and I went on. They even like sort of pull quotes that I, I gave in the video itself. And they, they left a link for the video up here. And so that's what drove so much of the traffic. But ultimately, it was kind of low quality traffic. So I don't know, Anna, if that helps you. But uh, it was it was kind of a fun little adventure for me. <laughs> uh, Stephen Phillips is asking, how many hours do you edit a week? Uh, let me go first and you can go. Go for it. Um, our channel is, is a little bit different. Our, most of our con... 90% of our content, maybe 95%, is all about helping other channels. And because of that, we have a totally different set of metrics. I mean, we do a lot of live streams. We do our Monday Night Live where we're we're showcasing other, other channels. We do our, our Tech Tuesday where we're trying to help folks understand a little bit more about YouTube, try to give them some tips and tricks on editing. And then on Thursdays, we, we do another four-hour live stream where we, we kind of analyze people's channels. We, we, we just try to help folks out. So it's totally different. We don't get the back-end traffic on a lot of our stuff that, that you do from, uh, from other videos where, you're, where they're telling how they make arches in their garden or they uh, talk about uh, putting mulch in their garden and, and creating uh, compost and different things like that and I'm obviously I'm talking about the the homesteading genre right now but we do have some of that we just don't have a lot of it most of our most of our stuff is is other but like for Monday nights when we have a different channel on every week to create a promo just a promo for that I probably have four to six hours in doing that because I research that channel I look at their videos I try to get bits and pieces out of out of those videos, little things. And Morgan will tell you, I even pulled out a, a he had a little bit about a rhinoceros and some goofy bird that's picking picking stuff off of him. I pulled that and put it into the promo. So it's it, it's just the kind of thing that's a little bit different. So I've got four to six hours just on Mondays for that, um, depending upon questions asked during the week. I can have two or three hours in doing stuff for this live stream on Tuesday nights. Thursday nights is kind of a kind of a fun thing for us, but um, otherwise we do try to get one or two other videos out. And I would say that uh, for every video, at least an hour in the editing, and uh, I probably don't spend as much time on thumbnails as what Morgan does, but. I'm going to say it's, it's going to depend on the content in your video. It's going to depend on the number of takes that you do. When I say takes, I'm more referring to different camera angles, multiple cameras, different things like that. So, Morgan, what, what's your take on it? Yeah, so so from an editing perspective, I mean, let me just actually go into because there's really like – three phases, four, actually four phases that I go through for each video. Um, and I'll, I'll give you week total. I, actually, I'll give you a, a single video averages and just double that. Cause I, I always do two videos a week. Sometimes I'll do a bonus one, but ever since I started doing the podcast, I haven't added the time. Um, what I do is number one, it's planning, which I easily take a half an hour to 45 minutes to just sort of sit down and plan. What are the points that I want to make? I never write a script ever. But I try to like 
figure out the major things I wanna communicate, and I also try to figure out what sort of shots and things do I wanna have in the video itself to make it more interesting visually. And so I, I spend actually a fair amount of time just planning it and really thinking about it, and I will you know, write down on, on, on some little yellow note cards just like this and stick them up on a wall and sort of figure out the different scenes I want in my video and map that out. Then that, so count that as a half hour, say. Then I spend about an hour, uh, maybe to two hours shooting the video. If I'm doing a project or I'm building something or I'm treating it more vloggy where I'm taking a camera with me and just capturing little pieces here and there, um, it, it will be longer than that or different than that. But generally speaking, it's it's somewhere in the neighborhood of an hour or two of actual shooting time that I'm, I'm recording stuff. Once I've got my footage though, that's where I spend most of my time. and and it can range from about two hours of editing for something really simple where it's just me talking about one specific topic uh, or I'm stringing <laughs> something together pretty quickly to, you know, I don't know, eight hours sometimes. And I, and I can go overboard. And, and I actually try to avoid doing that to myself just because I, I just don't have the time to contribute to that for a single video. But, um, you know, that's often a longer video. It has a lot more footage that I shot, which takes a lot more time to review. Multiple cameras always seem to add more time. You know, sometimes you think, oh, it's easier if you have two cameras because you don't have to keep moving the camera. But what I find is it actually takes longer because you're, you've got now twice as much footage to have to wade through. Um, but I'm ranging between four hour, or two hours and eight hours, but probably the average is somewhere around four or five hours for each video that I'm making. And then I spend about an hour of time doing all of the post-production stuff. So, you know, like we said earlier, about a half an hour for my thumbnail, you know, about 15 minutes or so for writing my description and writing all my tags. Uh, probably another 15 minutes trying to come up with just a really great title that's gonna make people wanna click on it. Um, and, and so that's a whole nother avenue of work that, I, that I'll put into it as well. So um, if I'm doing the math, and I, I usually don't do math in public here, but uh, <laughs> let's see, an hour and a half, or let's say two and a half hours for pre-production and production, uh, let's say four to five hours for post-production, another hour. So yeah, it's like you know, seven or eight hours of video, nine hours maybe sometimes. So you got a whole uh, you got a whole day in just making the video. Just making the video. Yep. But I never have a whole day to just make a video, which is kind of the irony of it all. <laughs> because, you know, between work and, you know, doing stuff with Allison or working here on the farm, um, it's always sort of happening in the margins. And and I just really focus on trying to be productive with the time that I've got and and crank stuff out as much as I can. You know, these these folks that, that do the vlogs, they, they they're cranking out a video every single day of 15 to 20 minutes it's just it's it's incredible a lot of work yeah no i mean yeah when you you look at like what that would actually take to do that on a day in day out basis i whew, <laughs> you can't have a day job and do that I, I which you know part of why i i post only twice a week is just not to burn myself out I mean, one of the things I found with all of this is it's it's not a sprint at all. This is a marathon, and you need to set a pace that you can personally live with and you can maintain. And and I personally think that the the consistency of it all and being you know consistent in terms of the day that you put out a video, being consistent in terms of the time of day even that you put out a video, that's that's those are just little tricks that will help you build your audience. There isn't a magic day and there isn't a magic time. But I think the more you can pick a day and pick a time and just stick with it and keep going with it, the better off you're going to be. One, it helps your audience know what to expect. But two, the advantage is it, it forces you to be accountable to yourself and forces you to have that consistency, which is me going to mean you're going to more practice and you're going to produce more videos as well. as So you're going to improve just the quality of what you're doing. But then two, you're not going to slack. You know, because I, I know I'm personally the type of person if I said, uh, I'll just skip doing a video this week and then, well, I'll skip doing the video this week and next week. And then, all right, wait, now it's been three weeks and I've got to do a video and uh, I don't really want to do it. And I think if I actually ever stopped doing a video, it would things would fall off horribly for me. I mean, I know not everybody's like that, but for me personally, 
having to, to be disciplined and consistent like that makes a huge difference. Okay. Anybody else got any questions? And, and if you think of something later, send, yeah. send an email. I'm sure that I can get Morgan to come back on again. Yeah, no, I Tech Two, like I said, Tech Tuesday is my 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 second favorite show, only behind the Spinning Wheel show of Thursdays. Um, I can't wait for that one. <laughs> like I said at the beginning, I really hope Daryl gets to review my channel because I I want to I want to know what you think, man. Homestead Paradise is the work really worth it. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, wanna... ooh. Well, <laughs> I, I'm not sure how you can answer that. Um, That's going to be a different answer for everybody. Yeah, it's a different answer for everybody. I mean, if, if you're saying from a, from a monetary standpoint, <laughs> no. No. For the amount of time that, that, that Sherry and I put into this from a, from a monetary standpoint, there, it, it's not even close. God's Not third, even close. God's third acre is going to be first this Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and Sunshine Farm, uh, yeah, we, 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 started, we started the show on... on uh, I hear you, Jessica. <laughs> on Thursday. Yeah. And... It was only going to be an hour. Well, we have some friends in Canada... Pusa Studios, that that they do something a little bit similar. There's just a little crazier, a little bit more jumping, a little. Well, they're 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 the age of our kids. Now, what can I say? We're we're old folks. We we run a slower pace. Well, we're older folks. We're boy, am I getting a look? I need to push Sherry on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> because, I don't know where this because, weird we're coming in here. because because I'm I'm just, just getting bring it home, Daryl. Bring it home. Oh, holy Does smokes! Does anybody the, have a shovel? The, the, the glare is coming across over here. How, how, how do your toes taste, man? Oh man! <laughs> I, actually, though, I, I do want to come come back to that question uh, of is it worth it that that homestead paradise asked and and. I, I, my, for me personally, hundred percent, no doubt about it. And, and there's three reasons why. Number one, I'm just a big video dork. I love making videos. It's something I've been doing since God knows I was a teenager, basically when I first picked up a video camera. And so I always have so much fun, just the act of making videos. Even if nobody was watching, I would still be making videos just because it, it just as a creative outlet, I get so much out of it personally. I think number two, I'm trying to build this farm and a big part of my marketing strategy for the farm and how I want to make the farm actually uh, viable from an economic perspective is to have a good, strong brand behind the farm. And I see YouTube as one of the easiest ways to build that brand without a lot of investment uh, from a just pure dollars perspective. And so as I build my skills as a farmer and I try to build the business of the farm, building the brand through YouTube and creating awareness for who we are and what we're doing here through YouTube and using that to tell our story is just a core part of the business strategy. So even though it's not really paying off from an economic standpoint immediately, I see a lot of potential for the future. And then I, th I think the third piece is, and, and like I've, it's cool, like I've seen so many people popping in here tonight that we've been talking with, plus there's you guys, the relationships that form and the people that you get to know through YouTube and, and, and kind of how you get to know folks, that to me has been awesome. I, I completely didn't anticipate that at all. Like a year ago when I started making videos that I'd make all these cool friends and get to know so many people. And, and so uh, I, that has its own value to me as well. So, so I think it's hundred percent worth it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't disagree with you, but everybody, let's face it. Everybody does talk about the monetary end of this. And from a monetary standpoint, no, it's not worth it from a monetary standpoint, at least wise in our case, it is not. And Oh, Oh no. I mean, I, I, I think I flashed it up earlier. I made like $870 
for what's the equivalent of uh, I mean 20 hours uh, like a, a thousand hours of work <laughs> like what does that work out to be as an hourly wage and that doesn't even include expenses like you know music licenses and, and the such um, so yeah, and, you know it's, it's a it's well, definitely a financial loser right now and your and your ongoing expenses with oh, yeah, with please. Premier Pro that that fortunately right now is being covered for you, but uh, yeah, if so, so from that standpoint, no, it's not worth it. From the self satisfaction standpoint, absolutely. From the from the meeting other folks and the community, mm -hmm. it's priceless. Yeah, you can't put a dollar value on that. We have met so many wonderful people, and a lot of them are in this uh, in this chat right now tonight. A lot of them are not, but a lot of them are. Yep. Um, but yeah, and, and folks, I, we laugh about it, we say it in jest, but I got to put the plug in. You know, if you're going to shop at Amazon, you can use that link down there. It doesn't cost you anything extra. All those little things down there at the bottom. We put those on just to try to try to get a little bit extra here to carry on because we don't uh well sharon and i are both retired so we're we're social security people and uh i don't have that ability to go out and work overtime and make some extra money this this is it and we love what we're doing we love the people but uh you know buy our t-shirts buy our uh thrive life Go out there and you gotta figure out how to make get smudged to make money. Get smudged to make know. money. We really should have put yeah. up that kissing booth for him in in Arkansas. You got him fixed, or we could have just. No, you no. need a smudge live stream, guys. That's the that's where the where it's at. <laughs> Are you gonna take care of puppies? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> that's why we got him fixed. <laughs> So. Well, that's right. We have the male dog. We don't have to take care of the puppies. That's what I mean. You can <laughs> like, sell the stun. Yeah. <laughs> duh. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, we, we talked about when we were at a VW Family Farm that Thursday afternoon before the shindig. We talked. Yeah, exactly, Chris. And that, I think I'm going to do that in Missouri. I'm going to make some. Um, we talked about putting up a, uh, instead of a kissing booth for smudge, it would have been a drooling booth. <laughs> Yeah, there were so many. I I swear, all the children at least once came over. Can we pet him? And then they didn't leave for like ten minutes. <laughs> and half of the adults. Yeah, we used to we used to do the uh, the Monday night promos where we'd have smudge talking and things like that. But we we got some criticism for it. What kind of criticism could you possibly get for that? I'm curious. Oh, you would not believe gosh well a lot of people are beyond mean you know it's demeaning to an animal so I, I, it's just crazy well do they realize that you're not actually like forcing his lip to move yeah <laughs> like, like, <laughs> good lord yeah it's just it's crazy and, do they picture that you had him like you know yeah, tied up we have him tied up and moving his mouth uh-huh yep <laughs> yep we'd well, be full of slobber <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, and, and and we have our haters. We can't make we can't put a video out without getting thumbs down, and and, and that's okay. That's okay. You can't please everybody. Uh, Overlook Valley, uh, he's getting another one when we go to Missouri to the life conference. So, and Chris is getting one also. But I'm seriously considering making small ones to bring and um, sell. Yes, she did. You're right. And so did um, Ray Lynn. He, the first thing, she went over and to pet him, and he just drooled all over her, and she backed up so fast she didn't want to touch him after that. But she was right there with him. And that's why I carried a towel with him wherever yeah. we went. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, you know, it's 10 o'clock. All right. And I got a podcast. I got to still edit tonight. So, yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're doing that on a weekly basis. Oh yeah, too. thirteen oh, yeah. moons. It's it's my mom's recipe, so yeah, you got a point there. But that's that's just an audio edit. 
that's yeah that that i should have banged out in half an hour so uh, i'm good there but uh this was a lot of fun i hope everybody who watched this got some value and if yeah if you guys have questions hit me up on social media somewhere um i'm happy to keep answering stuff this was fun though thank you guys for letting me crash with you today hopefully wow. i wasn't we can't wait going till thursday. too fast yeah we can't wait till thursday so yeah i'm looking forward to it it should be fun so morgan thanks so much for uh for jumping in here tonight uh just get a different perspective out here mm -hmm. for for other folks um and again everybody in the chat thank you all for being here we appreciate each and every one of you um i think we've pretty well used up you can't you can't hum if you hold your nose no that that's an old one now honey that's, you, that's you have to think of, you, they have to think of something new for thursday you know what it is you can't hum if you go subscribe to goldshaw farm on youtube apparently <laughs> if, you, if you if you click the subscribe button and then try to hum you won't be able to do it so i, I dare anybody to try that <laughs> <laughs> they were well he mentioned that last thursday night and it was just was it yesterday or sunday sunday some somebody made a comment on facebook and i just happened to catch it and i'm going Where that's just very ironic that daryl mentioned that last thursday when we left the live stream and then all of a sudden it's like so Where'd you hear that from? And they never did answer. Yeah, that that, <laughs> that, com that comment got more airtime than my videos do. <laughs> awesome. Well, have a great night, guys. Oh, it was 13 moons. There, see, there you go. <laughs> okay. I knew they looked familiar. So, and a special thank you to the moderators. We don't... Uh, yeah. I, I, I never mean to forget them, but I know that I have some time. Ms. Moderators do a great job. Ms. Thanks, everybody, Ms. for Brinda being did here. did an awesome job. Everyone have a good evening. We'll see you Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard. Good night, folks. Yeah, bye. Well, that was